We've come to section 18, hazardous locations. Let's look at the changes for 2015. It has been determined the zone and division systems of area classification in section 18 provide equivalent levels of safety. Preference is given to the zone system of area classification. The code does not give preference to the IEC type of equipment. Section 18 has been completely revised. Hazardous locations are now classified into just two categories, explosive gas atmospheres and explosive dust atmospheres. New definitions have been added. Some former rules have been relocated and are now defined terms. Some rules regarding the installation of specific electrical equipment types have been deleted. The rules in Section 18 have been reduced from 99 to 42 rules. In the 2012 code, hazardous locations were organized into three classifications depending on the nature of the hazard. Flammable gases or vapors, combustible or conductive combustible dusts, and easily ignitable fibers or flyings. In the 2015 code, hazardous locations have been reorganized into two classifications, explosive gas atmospheres, which includes gases, vapors, or mists, and explosive dust atmospheres, which include dust, fibers, or flyings. Explosive atmosphere is a new term and is generic in nature. Explosive atmospheres can be created in the form of gas, vapor, dust, fibers, or flyings. In this controlled demonstration at FM Global's one-of-a-kind research campus in West Gloucester, Rhode Island, the five ingredients needed to cause dust to explode, air, fuel, heat, suspension, and confinement, are provided to cause the explosion, or more appropriately, a partial volume deflagration. Here, one hard hat full of coal dust is placed in a trough approximately two thirds of the height of the enclosure, which measures 10 feet wide by 12 feet deep by 15 feet high. A small charge was then introduced to distribute and suspend the dust, followed by an ignition source. The determination of area classifications must be performed by qualified professional engineers, considering the type of materials involved, the processes used, and the length of time a dusty environment lasts. Dust is a generic term, including both combustible dust and combustible flyings. All these terms are defined in Rule 18002 Special Terminology. Explosive dust atmospheres are categorized on the basis of how often the hazard occurs and the length of time the hazard exists. The classifications and the associated timeframes are from the International Electrotechnical Committee standards for hazardous area classifications. Zone 20 is a location with the highest risk of explosion associated with operating electrical equipment. If an explosive dust atmosphere is present more than 1,000 hours a year, it is determined to be a Zone 20 location. Zone 21 is a location with a lesser risk of explosion associated with operating electrical equipment. If an explosive dust atmosphere is present from 10 to 1,000 hours a year, it is determined to be a Zone 21 location. Zone 22 is a location with the least risk of explosion associated with operating electrical equipment. If an explosive dust atmosphere is present less than 10 hours a year, it is determined to be a Zone 22 location. Equipment protection levels was introduced in the 2012 code and when applied to electrical equipment used in hazardous atmospheres, provide an indication of the suitability of electrical equipment for each zone. Equipment marked with a D are designed for dust atmospheres. Fire damp is a term to describe a hazardous gas atmosphere in mines, mainly comprised of methane. This graph shows the relationship between equipment protection levels and acceptable applications in a classified area. 
EPL markings do not indicate which safety designs or methods of protection are incorporated into the device or equipment. Explosion-proof equipment may be marked with an equipment protection level, as well as other markings to inform the user which explosive atmospheres and zones the equipment may be safely installed in. New additional methods of protection are shown in red. Equipment may be marked with methods of protection which indicate the specific type or types of design incorporated into a device or equipment instead of an EPL. When this is the case, the user must consult the code to determine the suitability of the equipment design for the intended application within the explosive gas or dust atmospheres. Electrical contractors involved with an installation where the materials and processes used within could be a hazardous or explosive location must review the installation with the owner, provide drawings and letters from the engineer which establish each classified area and confirm the materials, processes and equipment types to be used within. Ensure all documentation and submit a declaration of compliance before energizing any equipment in classified areas. And remember, all dust is considered flammable unless it can be proven otherwise. That's all for Section 18. Thanks for watching.